what you'll need for this video is you will need your box, your Arduino box, which has inside it all of these prototyping cables. So make sure you've got the box full of the cables. Also inside your box, you have a large breadboard and you have a mini breadboard. You're going to need the mini one today. And you will have been supplied with a chip. This is the chip that you want to make sure that you have as well. So make sure the chip is there. All right, so with your mini breadboard, the most important thing to understand is what's going on underneath. So you've got these lines that go across. All these lines, so this line here, underneath is just one open space with a metallic strip. So anywhere that I put a piece of metal inside will be linked along that line. It's separated though in the middle, so this line over here is different to this line. So all the ones across here are connected, and all the ones across here are connected, but these are all separate. So down is separate, but across they're connected, split in the middle. So what we need to do is grab our chip, and if you look closely, your chip has two ends. It has one end which has that little semicircle on the top of it, so that's the top of your chip. The other end doesn't have anything, that's the bottom. So make sure you've got the top of the chip and you line it up to the middle of your breadboard so it goes across both ends of the breadboard. So the, the eight pins on this side of your chip are separated from the eight pins on the other side, making sure the top, which is the semicircle, goes at the top of the breadboard. And you just push that in. Sometimes it's a bit hard, but you just got to push that in. And it's okay, those, those pins aren't um, fragile, you can just push them in and don't worry if you need to do Shoot some them. manipulation. So once you've pushed it in, you should find that your the left side of your chip is in E3, and the right side of your chip, the top, is in F3. So along the top you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, so the next step, now this chip has eight pins, as I said, on one side and eight pins on the other side. Each of them do something different. It will run one of the motors on the left side and one of them on the right side. But before we can do that, we're going to first supply power to the chip. So as we said in a previous video, power is usually, we use a red uh, wire. So in your packs, if you can find as many red or if you don't have too many red ones, some orange ones. So I'm going to use three short red or orange and one long red or orange. So I've got these three short, I'm going to use orange because I don't have so many reds. So I've got three short orange and one long red that I'm going to use. I'm going to put one end of my pin into D3 and the other end into G3. So now you'll notice the top pin on the left on one side is connected to the top pin on the other side because I'm going to supply the power from the Arduino into one side and that power then can travel to the other side through this wire. That also needs to travel down to this last pin. So what you'll need to do then, since these this top row here is connected, mm -hmm. I'm just going to place another one into H3. And it needs to connect down to H10. And we will then take your longest wire. Mm -hmm. We're going to place that into I3. And the other end of it's going to go into the 5 volt port on our Arduino. So if you grab your Arduino, if you remember, down one of the sides it had the 3.3 volt and the 5 volt. So you're going to put the other end of your long cable into the 5 volt. So what is essentially happening is your Arduino, once it's powered, will supply a current directly into the top of your chip and that will send, using those other two pathways, the current into those other ports of your chip.